Hi, my name is Piotr, and in today's video I'd like to show you how to implement React Scheduler. It's a package that allows you easily and quickly visualize Gantt chart in your application. The grid drawn on a canvas is much more efficient than traditional DOM-based solutions, allowing for rendering a large amount of data without a noticeable decrease in smoothness. For the purposes of this tutorial, I have prepared an application in Next.js in version 13.4. Installation through npm or yarn is simple and almost fully automated. It requires the developer to do the brief environment setup. Before you proceed with installing React or Scheduler, check the contents of the nvmrc file to find the information about the minimum required Node.js version. Of course, you can use other package managers. I'll use yarn. All right. Scheduler is installed, so it's time to have some fun. As you can see in my sample application, I already have reserved space where I would like to display the scheduler. I will now start the application using the command yarn dev, and we will begin the implementation process. As I mentioned earlier, I have already prepared the application in Next.js. We will start by importing the scheduler wrapper component. If you prefer, you can import it directly. We will also add two required props, data and is loading. I have prepared sample data that I could put into the scheduler, but it would be all the data at once, regardless the specific date range we want to display. Therefore, it's worth implementing a function to filter out unwanted data. I will also set up a state for the date range, start date and end date. As you can see, the application has been displayed, but it doesn't show any data. Let's pass our filtered data to the data prop. React Scheduler will automatically organize and divide the data on the grid. We previously added the state for the date range. Let's use it to allow the scheduler to change the date range. We will use the onRangeChange prop for this, which accepts the function. As you may notice, continuous scrolling in either direction causes fewer items to appear on the grid. That's because not all items are between the dates range set by the scheduler. Let's move on to the following functionality, clicking on the tiles in the grid. As you can see, currently nothing happens when you click. Let's fix this by adding the onTileClick prop, which accepts a function. I will use a browser alert to display the data of the tile I click on. After refreshing, clicking on a specific tile will provide us with information about it. Similarly, we can do the same for the items displayed in the left column. The onItemClick prop accepts a function and just like clicking on a tile, it provides us with information about the respective item. React Scheduler also has a config prop, which allows us to configure the application. The object we pass must have a zoom key with a value of either 0 or 1. As the first functionality, I will show you max records per page, which enables data pagination. As you can see, Two additional buttons have appeared on the left column. We recommend configuring this property because HTML canvas has its limitations when it comes to the width and the height. Pagination is working, so let's move on to the filtering button. Let's add another key to the config called filter button state. It accepts the value below zero, zero or above zero. Setting it to, for example, negative one We'll hide the button. Setting it to the zero will make the button visible and indicate that no filter is applied. Meanwhile, setting it to one will indicate that filters are in use. Let's add handling for clicking the filter button. The onFilterData prop accepts a function. 
I will display an alert for information about the click. Let's hide the filter button because we don't need it. Additionally, we can configure the language, English or Polish. Let's also change the number of records per page to 10. The scheduler allows us to preview both monthly and daily views. We can also configure the default view. Setting the zoom key to 1 will change the default view to daily. The default value is 0. Now, let's address the tooltip. We can decide whether we want the tooltip to display information about availability on weekends. By default, this value is set to false, and the tooltip ignores weekends. As you can see, when in daily view, hovering over the weekend displays a tooltip showing zero hours booked. Similarly, setting it to true will show the occupancy as on any other weekday. The scheduler also includes a search input that allows you to search for the records by name, regardless of pagination. The React scheduler you see here is embedded in a container. However, if you prefer, you can display it in full screen mode. It is positioned absolutely and occupies the entire container, so you decide how much space it will take in your application. Thank you for being here with me. I hope I was able to provide you with valuable information and understanding of implementation of React Scheduler. If you have any more questions or concerns, or if you'd like to share your feedback, please don't hesitate to leave your comments below this video. You can find a link to the repository in the video description and don't forget to star it. And thanks again for your attention and take care.